When you're almost famous, you just might find yourself live on air on WATD. Hour two of Almost Famous begins now. Welcome to the tiny stage portion of Almost Famous here on 95.9 WATD. Introducing you to the world of local bands and musicians. From right here on the South Shore into Boston and all across New England. We do it every Tuesday night. Brought to you by Tiny and Sons Glass, Route 53 in Pembroke. Online at tinyandsons.com. And we are on the tiny stage tonight with the incredible Kat Kennedy. Kat, good evening. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Welcome back. Thank you. (laughs) I think it's been almost exactly a year since you were here last. No way. Really? That's funny. I think you were here, was it last winter? It might have been. Honestly, I can't remember. Yeah, it was because there was snow on the ground. I think you're right. Very cool. So uh, what's new with our first and foremost? Tell us, who is Kat Kennedy before we get too much further into this? So I'm a singer-songwriter based in Boston, and uh, I've been here for seven years now, originally from Connecticut. So I guess a lot of people describe the sound as like folk pop, you could say. Um, And it's evolved recently to include a full band. Excellent. Well, first of all, what brought you to uh, Massachusetts? I went to Berkeley, College of Music. So when I was 18, I left home and came to Boston to go to school. What was it about Berkeley that that, uh, attracted you? Wow. I don't know. I mean, it has such a good reputation. I think it was just the reputation that got me. I was like, wow, it was my dream school. And I never thought, because I hadn't studied anything. I mean, I hadn't taken a lesson. I hadn't done anything. So I never thought I would get into it. But I was like, all right, I'll give it a shot. And when I did get in, I was like, yeah, definitely what you, I want to do. <laughs> were you always musical, or is that something that kind of came along later in your, your childhood or later in your teenage years? Well, I was always musical, but I, I thought that I was going to work with animals, actually, until I was 17. I was like, I had super bad stage fright, like I had really bad stage anxiety, so I liked to sing, and my mom was a singer, um, but I was always just too afraid to do it, or like it was always really nerve-wracking for me to do it. Um, and then somewhere around 17, I was like, I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to try to audition for schools and see if I get in, then I'll pursue it. Very cool. And uh, speaking of animals, I understand that you have at least one. Yes, I do. (laughs) You know I love to talk about it. (laughs) I do. I have a dog, Toby. He's all over my Instagram. And I heard you recently made him some uh, booties, too, uh, to deal with the uh, the cold temperatures. Oh, my God. How did that happen? (laughs) Not just one booty, but... Pro- there was probably like six prototypes of those. <laughs> it was just so cold. Like two weeks ago, it was like negative two degrees or something like that. And he would just stop. He couldn't go to the bathroom outside. And I live in the city, so I don't have a yard. So I had to walk him outside. So I started with socks with some rubber bands. Then it evolved to baby socks. Those fell off. Then it evolved into me custom making his dog booties every time he had to go on a walk where I would, I would put tape around the, the outside of the baby sock so that it was like tighter on his paw. And then I'd have to cut him out of it each time and redo it every oh. time we went out. What kind of dog is he? He's a terrier mix. Oh, cool. Yeah. Speaking of the band, you've got the band in studio tonight. Let's uh, introduce the guys. Who do we have here tonight, Ken? Yeah, so right next to me is Austin Smith. He's playing electric guitar tonight. Then we've got Luis Contreras over there on bass. And then we've got Chris Petty on drums. Excellent. Well, uh, let's talk to the guys in a little bit, but uh, let's start off with the song, Cat. What are we going to kick the night off with tonight? So this is one from my first EP. This one's called Teach Me. All right. We have Cat Kennedy in studio tonight on 95.9 WATD. Before you launch into the song, Cat, share with us your online information. All right. So it's facebook.com slash Music. Website is catkennedymusic.com. Um, Instagram is at catdogmusic, and that's cat with a K. Cool. And we're going to tell you why she's sharing these songs with you tonight, right after we uh, listen to this. Please. No way, I never have and I won't. 
bass voice could be the way we were before. I don't wanna win the war, give me another slam in door. You can you teach me how to love? I want to so bad. You show me how to dance. No, I never have, and I want to love you. Ooh, 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 and I want to love you. Ooh, 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 yeah. Can you teach me how to love? I want to so bad. Can you show me how to play? We have Cat Kennedy in studio tonight, 95.9 WATD with the band Cat. Nice job on that. Tell us about that song. What's that all about? Wow, so I wrote that one uh, quite a few years ago because it was on my first EP, and it was just about this problem I was having with somebody where, you know, our relationship was one where I was really trying, or I felt like I was really trying, and I was trying to um, figure out what it was that he wanted from me, like what it was that he needed for me to... uh, show that he appreciated me I guess um so that song came out of that and I think I was just driving in the car and the hook like the ooh ooh came came first in my mind and then the rest of the song kind of developed very cool now the first EP where is that available so that is on Spotify and on iTunes um and then we re-recorded it as an acoustic version and that's um only for sale at shows you can only get that the physical copies at shows um and then they're on YouTube as well Excellent how about plans for a full length album Yes so we're we're working on that right now and we're really excited we have a Kickstarter coming out this month um right now and uh we're hoping to raise ten thousand dollars to get our first full length off the ground excellent so what's involved in that process kick i know it's happening at the moment so what can people expect to uh to see on the kickstarter page yeah so it's got a video describing you know who we are and what we do and who's going to be working on the album and and how it's going to all take place and um i'm just so excited about this album because it's been in my mind for a long time to do a full length um and now i've got this awesome group of guys behind me that are working with me and know the song super well um so it's going to be super fun to record with them and then on top of that i've got some great producers as well that i'm working with um to make it happen and then of course the post-production, I've worked with Ahmed Khan. He did my first EP. He mixed it. Um, and then Martina Albano, who is a friend from Berkeley, is going to master it. So I'm just so excited to see it come all come together. Excellent. So uh, the songs, um, I know, are ready to go. How do these songs, how have the songs evolved uh, since the, uh, the EP that you recorded? Well, with the EP, you know, it was really heavily, it was pretty heavily electronic. And so then I went back because I was doing a lot of solo work. So a lot of it was acoustic. Um, So I went back and re-recorded it as pretty much it was live. So it was a quick, like, um, you know, just in and out of the studio, live takes pretty much um, and did that. And with this one, I wanted to take my time to get the sound, um, like the current sound, I guess, as it was now. Um, So I've worked really hard to try to make it a good mix of being live and electronic um, and having all those elements kind of blend nicely. Now, when the first EP was recorded, did you have the band that's in studio now? No, I didn't. No, so it was just me and a producer, and that's part of why the sound came out very different from what I was doing live because, you know, I didn't have that producer at live shows. I just had my guitar. So when I re-recorded it, that was more a representation of what I was doing um, and what people were seeing. And now I've got these guys who are fantastic um, and have added so much to the sound and the energy of the songs. Um, So they're going to come in and do their part um, on the record. Now, how did you all come together and meet as a band? 
So Luis and I have been playing together for a while. He's um, playing bass. And we must have started like two years ago, I think. Um, is Luis, hop up to that mic. <laughs> we, let's, let's bring you into this conversation. Ago. Yeah, so it's through like just mutual friends is how we met. Um, and so he started playing with me. And then now Austin is another mutual friend situation, but we're roommates. So Austin plays guitar. Um, and then Chris was a recommendation just out of the blue. And he ended up being the perfect addition to the group. So it just worked out really nicely where um, it kind of was just a, a chance thing. Like someone said, oh, this is a good drummer. And so I, I asked him because I needed someone for a show. And since then, he's just been incredible. He's added so much. Very cool. So the, the Kickstarter, where can people go to learn information on this and maybe contribute too? Yeah, so I would recommend going to my Facebook because I'll be most actively posting and updating about it. And that's going to have the link to... Um, you know, the Kickstarter and the video where you can learn more about us. Um, so definitely go right on my Facebook. It's facebook.com slash Cat Kennedy Music, and that's Cat with a K. Um, and it has all my info about it. And we're really just looking for people to give whatever they have. Um, you know, so if it's a dollar, if it's $100, whatever, um, every little bit goes a long way to making this thing real. So. Now, let's explain how Kickstarter works because, you know, you don't only give money to incredible incredible musicians, but you also get some cool stuff in return. Exactly, yeah. And so one of the rewards actually involves you, so I'm glad you brought it up. Um, yeah, so donors who give $300, up to five donors, so it is limited, um, are going to have their songs DJed on this radio. Yes, and, and I believe by you. Yes, by me, that's correct. I don't know how to do that yet, so I'm hoping that <laughs> you're going to be helping me. But yeah, I'm going to DJ your song. Um, well, I'm don't... planning on being out of town that night, so it's going to just be all you in the oh, studio. Oh, great. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it is really cool. I like Kickstarter a lot. One of the reasons I chose it is because it's all or nothing. So it's kind of like, you know, we're going all the way with this. And if people are behind us, then we're going to make it happen. Um, so, you know, we have to make our goal of $10,000. Otherwise, no one gets charged. No one's card gets charged. Um, and so with that, you can donate any amount. But if you get certain, if you reach like certain levels, like $10, $25, $50 um, and upwards, you get certain rewards with it. So the first one, the $10 one, um, is just a pre-order of the CD um, and a thank you from us. Uh, so it kind of goes up in levels like that. Excellent. Well, let's talk more about the Kickstarter and the rewards uh, after another song. What do you want to play next? Awesome. Okay, so this is a new one. This is actually going to be the single um, from the album. So this one's called Notice. All right, and we have Cat Kennedy in studio tonight on 95.9. W-A-T-D, talking about the Kickstarter, talking about new music. And uh, Kat, again, share with us your website before we uh, go into this next song. Sure, it's catkennedymusic.com. All right, go for it. Give me goosebumps I feel your skin But I can't touch I come undone When you look at me When you look at me Out of bed you're a ten Yeah, you're so good You'd think I'm cool Yeah, I know you would You'd come undone If you look at me But you don't look at me And I, I
Cat Kennedy on the tiny stage tonight. 95.9 WATD. Tell us about that song. So that one I'm just so excited to see happen. So um, Andy Seltzer in New York is going to produce that. And he most recently just worked on a, a track with Maggie, Maggie Rogers. Uh, you've probably heard of her. She's up and coming. Um, well, she's not up and coming. She's she's here. Like, she is totally yeah, rocking say, it. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm really excited to see what Andy is going to do with that. Um, and that'll be the single, like I said. That one was written while I was out in L.A. this summer. So I took a road trip out there, a tour out there. Um, and I got to go in the studio with two of my really good friends. Um, and that was Matt Free and Miranda and Zinza and write that one. Excellent. Yeah. That is the voice of Kat Kennedy. She is in studio tonight along with the band talking about an incredible Kickstarter campaign. And I can't uh, show with us the website again where people can go to learn more information on that. Yeah, so I would actually go to my Facebook, facebook.com slash Cat Kennedy Music. If you don't have a Facebook, um, it's catkennedymusic.com. Excellent. And that's Cat with a K. That's right. Very cool. We do have to take a very quick break here on WATD, but we have more with Cat Kennedy. And we'll talk more about that Kickstarter and the new album coming up right after this on 95.9 WATD. A message to struggling musicians. Don't give up. Ever. Victory is mine. Almost Famous, 95.9 WATD. Welcome back to Almost Famous here on 95.9 WATD, introducing you to the world of local bands and musicians. Every Tuesday night, 8 till 10 p.m., brought to you by Tiny and Sons Glass. My name is John Shea. We are on the tiny stage tonight with the incredible Cat Kennedy. Cat, how's it going in there? It's going very well. Thank you. Fantastic. So uh, before we reintroduce you, let's reintroduce who is behind you. Absolutely. So we've got Austin Smith on guitar. Chris Petty is behind me on percussion today. And then Luis Contreras is on bass. How are you guys doing? I'm doing well. Very well. Thank Happy you. Happy to be here. Very good. Good to have you here. So I want to talk to the band for just a little bit here. And uh, Luis, I'll start with you. Tell us uh, how you get started in music. Ooh, okay. So in high school, they just threw me in choir. Um, and it, it wasn't something that I expected to like. It was just an elective that they gave me in my freshman year. And I, I found that I had a good ear and I could sing on pitch, even though I never really did it before. And I just kind of continued down that path, started doing guitar in my junior year, dumped the guitar after a couple months and just stuck with the bass. And uh, then I ended up going to Miami-Dade College for music and transferring over to Berkeley, and that's how I got here to Boston. Excellent. Who wants to go next? Uh, I got a guitar when I was 11 for Christmas, and then that was the end of it, just ever since. It's been <laughs> pretty much music. And uh, I like the telly, by the way. Yeah, it's a beauty. I love this guitar. What year is that? But it looks like a somewhat like a sixties or seventies. <laughs> this ain't no nothing special. This is some. I don't know. It's like it's a, got a nice twang to it. It's like a dog from the pound or something. You know, <laughs> it's like I don't know anything about its history, but I know I love it. Toby too. Yeah, exactly. Just the same. <laughs> Who's next? Uh, yeah, this is Chris. Yeah. Um, I guess I started uh, when I was very young on the piano, did piano lessons, and then picked up the drums around junior high, did percussion and drum set through high school, and then junior college out in Utah, which is where I'm from. Studied a lot of jazz and uh, other like mallet instruments like vibraphone and marimba, and then transferred to Berkeley where I started doing uh, electronic production in addition to drum set and uh, other percussion. And then met Kat a couple, I guess, what, six months ago? And started playing with her and just having a good time. Very cool. And Kat, tell us about your musical background. Well, I, told, I said a little bit before that I was always interested in going into, like I didn't put a lot of focus into music until I was older. But when did um, you actually pick up the guitar? I didn't pick up guitar until Berkeley. Basically. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. yeah. So um, I think I w I think I had one when my senior year of high school, um, and I learned maybe a few chords, 
from my uncle who plays. Uh, and then once I got to Berkeley and I decided I wanted to do songwriting, it's just kind of, it's so much easier to be able to play something. Like they really encourage you to either learn keyboard or if you have another instrument to be proficient enough to be able to play your own songs on it. Um, so I started to do that. And I also just knew that I needed to self-accompany because of all the shows that I was playing. Um, so yeah, I kind of just learned it along the way and um, I got lucky to do some lessons at Berkeley as well on guitar. Nice. How yeah. about influences? Who influenced you? Oh man, that, like, I was very into certain CDs and certain CDs, well, especially my mom, she would just play them over and over and over again. So there's like certain CDs that I just know front to back, like really well. So Tracy Chapman was huge for me. Um, we had a lot of like classic country, like Johnny Cash and Patsy Cline. And um, then as I got older, some Ingrid Michaelson and um, Feist. Um, yeah. Excellent. How about on the uh, local scene? Who are you listening to locally? Oh, man, there's so many good. Hannah Khan's amazing. I just We just went together to a Chris Gennadik show. Yes. That was great. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. She's great. Um, so she's not really local anymore, but she was local, so I still consider her <laughs> to be. Uh, L.A. bound. Yes, exactly. And Katie Dobbins is great. Um, yeah. Excellent. Very cool. And you're in the middle of a Kickstarter campaign. Tell us about that. I know we started talking about that during the first break. So what's yes. happening with the Kickstarter? Yeah, so we're um, we're in the middle of it, and we've got to raise $10,000 by the end of the month period. So that's uh, by March 10th um, to be able to fund our album, which should be coming out this summer. And thank you for including us in your rewards because, uh, if you, what was it, $300? Yes, Tell us about that. Yeah, so for $300, if you donate... So the way Kickstarter works for anybody who's like just tuning in is that you can give any amount that you want to give, um, but you have the option of giving a certain amount and getting a reward. So for $300, in addition to CDs, um, and there's like one other thing, like a, a sticker or something like that, if you are a local musician, you can have your song DJ'd here, so played on the radio, um, DJ'd by me. Exactly. Can I, Toby come that night, too? Is he allowed to? Of course. Oh, of course he can, then. He would love that. I've had a few uh, dog co-hosts in the past. No way. Oh, that, yeah. They're my favorite. They, they just they sleep under the control board. They love it. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, let's hear some more music, Kat. What's next on your set list tonight? Sure. So this one's a little bit slower. Um, this is going to be on the album as well. This is called Fool. Excellent. You've got Cat Kennedy in studio tonight. On 95.9 WATD, it's all yours. You're ready to be sorry Much love, you're so proud of me Yeah, wouldn't that be nice And there you go, you say the right thing You know so bad, I wanna hear I'm dizzy being wound around your finger So you can can start on
Cat Kennedy in studio tonight, 95.9 WATD. On the tiny stage, Cat, tell us about that song. Fool. Yeah, so let's see. I wrote that. That one's pretty recent. Um, I must have written that around the time I last came in here, so last winter. Um, and that was a song about, you know, getting taken advantage of, I guess, of being the same thing happening over and over again and me finally waking up and realizing, okay, this is not a good relationship. Tell us how you compose a song. Are they songs that come from real life experiences or are you the type of person that can kind of put yourself into somebody else's place and write a song that way? You know, there's sometimes I can do that for sure. Um, but a lot of the stuff ever since Last Call, which I'm going to play at the end of this, ever since that one, um, I wrote that one and it really came from the heart. And after that, um, I never got sick of playing it. Like, it just always meant something to me, and it was so much more fun. Like, it's so cathartic to write a song um, and get your emotions out there and then play it live and see how people re- relate to it. It's just, it's a great feeling. Um, so definitely more from experience. And a lot of the times I'll be driving, because I drive so much for playing and doing shows. Um, so a lot of times I'll be driving and I'll hear a melody and um, try to keep it until I get to where I'm going and record it really quick. Um, and that was probably one of those. And then the chorus comes together, usually. And then from there, I'll, I'll get the verses. Very cool. Now, are you the kind of person that uh, gets inspired by their own work? Inspired by my own work? In what way? Like, do you ever find yourself maybe plagiarizing yourself? Oh, um, in other words, like I write a song and then I'll think back to another song and be like, oh, that was cool how I did that? Yeah, Is exactly. that what you mean? Yeah. Okay, um... Or, or maybe you, you write a song, you start writing on a song, you throw it away, but then you come back and you take the melody and you rearrange the melody and use it for something else. Oh, absolutely. That happens to me all the time. I'm actually writing a song right now where I was trying to write a, a new song and then I got one chorus out of it and then a verse. And then I was like, well, that verse doesn't really fit with that chorus. So I put the chorus aside and that happened three times. So now I have like three different choruses and, and this one verse. Um, so that definitely happens a lot where I'll like, I'll think, you know, I'll, I'll scrap a song and just take a bit of it and use it for a completely different song. Do you have any music or any songs that you think are too personal to share that you maybe keep to yourself that uh, nobody else has heard except for you? You know, I usually do share them. Um... But, yeah, there's definitely some songs where they're really personal to me. And, you know, I wouldn't put them on the album probably because they're just that close to my heart. And, and, and also, when you're writing, are you the type of person that can just plow right through a song and complete it in, you know, just a few a few minutes, maybe a few hours? Or do, do your songs tend to take longer, years, months? No, I've never weeks. completed a song in a few minutes, but I usually do complete a song in a few hours, especially if I'm co-writing. I try to, there's something satisfying about just getting at least like verse, chorus, and uh, bridge done, um, or like two verses and a chorus done. So most of the song done in three, four hours. Um, so and yeah. For those not familiar with co-writing, tell us how that works. Yeah, so... Um, Basically, if you like someone's work or you're interested in collaborating with them, um, the way it works for me is we just sit down and share ideas. Like if we had little thoughts about a song, um, we kind of swap them. And if I think something's cool, I'm like, oh, yeah, we should we should work on that. And the same thing for me, you know, if they like even a title or something like that, they're like, yeah, let's make a, a song about that one word or one phrase that was in my mind for a bit um so it's pretty fun especially if they have skills i mean everyone always has like skills that you don't have so it's nice when you can complement each other and agree on most things and just use each other's like um strengths i guess is there anybody that you'd love to co-write with that you haven't already oh man so many people yeah i have not done enough co-writing i've just been falling in love with it lately because it's so nice you know i picked up guitar later so it's so nice to have someone who just has amazing guitar chops and can come in and like help me do something I've never done before harmonically. Um, that's really cool. So, gosh, there's tons of people I would like to, to co-write. <laughs> there's too many for me to even, like, think of a name right now, I guess. Very cool. That is the voice of Kat Kennedy. She is in studio tonight. Share with us your online information, especially that information about the ongoing Kickstarter campaign. 
Yeah, so it's facebook.com slash Cat Kennedy Music, and that's Cat with a K. Um, and that's probably the best place to see everything about my shows and all that stuff and definitely about the Kickstarter which is going on right now. That's the fundraiser for the album that we have. Um, and then the website is catkennedymusic.com and Instagram is at catdogmusic. Awesome. Can we hear some more music? Absolutely. What are we hearing next tonight? All right. So this one is, uh, we've recorded this one live before so you can see it on YouTube. Um, this one's called Space and this is also going to be on the album. This is one of my favorite songs by you, by the way. Oh yeah? Thank you. <laughs> Let's hear it. We have Cat Kennedy in the studio tonight. 95.9 WATD. It's all yours. Gravity is weighing on me. I think I've lost myself somewhere in the eye. Fear can't stop to feel, can't tell what's real It's getting hard to see You're asking me For answers I can't give Choices I can't make To turn back time's hand No one in this world can The man in the moon might understand Maybe he'll forgive me And I don't mean to leave you down on earth but there's nothing for me here I keep pretending it's a work But I'm not breathing the same air Kat Kennedy in studio tonight, 95.9 WATD. Tell us about that song, Kat. Space. Hmm. Okay, so that one, that must be two years ago. I was going through a breakup. Classic recipe for a song. Um, and, you know, honestly, that one kind of speaks for itself. I liked the idea of using a metaphor for um, needing, literally needing space in a relationship. You know, just needing, like, time apart to figure things out. And it was sad, of course. All breakups are so... Um, yeah, so I was just saying, you know, it's, it's nothing personal, basically. It's just I need space and, and tried to draw on elements of outer space for the song. Do the people that you write songs about, and particularly the breakup songs, do they know the songs that you write are about them? No, I, I don't think they do, at least. And I have had a few people 
reach out to me thinking songs are about them. And I was like, no, they're not even close to being about you. So I think the people that are act- they're actually about have no idea. And maybe some other people think they are about them. But, but yeah, no. The people they're actually about, I don't think they know. <laughs> kind of like uh, Carly Simon, Joe Sylvain. <laughs> That's, yep, <yeah>, exactly. <laughs> yep. Excellent. That is Kat Kennedy. Let's talk more about the Kickstarter because it's happening right now. How can people get involved? Yeah, so there's a lot of ways that you can get involved. I mean, I it's so important to just share it and to get it out to as many people as possible because even if you're not in a place where you can give a lot of money or any money, um, you know, if you're able to share it and get it in front of someone who likes the idea of the album or what we do and does have a little bit to give, then that helps so much. Um, so, you know, going to my Facebook, which is facebook.com slash Cat Kennedy Music. Um, there's tons of links, you know, every day that I'm sharing. Um, you can just grab one of those and share it on your own social media. And that helps a lot. Um, and then obviously also you can donate um, and choose one of the reward levels. Awesome. And up on the website as well, um, are there a list of upcoming shows? Yes. So we've got the calendar. Um, it's through Bands in Town is how it's set up. Uh, so if you have that, you probably already got notified, but it is listed um, on a calendar there on my website. Awesome. And yeah. I've seen a, a few of your shows, uh, in particular, the, one of my favorite venues, the Stoughton House of Brews. Yes. You've been there a few times. But the uh, the Cat Kennedy live experience, I've noticed, is is incredibly unique because there's not only your original songs, but the, the covers that you pick are somewhat unusual for the singer-songwriter type. There's a lot of uh, classic hits and a lot of Elvis, too. How do you pick the songs that you cover live? Well, I've been influenced by a lot of different things. Like I was saying, I, I grew up on a lot of classic country, and then I, as I got older, I fell in love with pop, so I listen to a lot of pop now. So um, when it's the longer sets, like you said, Stoughton House of Brews is three hours. Um, <clears throat> I definitely do as many originals as I can. But then we also try to put in some current songs and pop songs that people can sing along to, and then the classics, too. So anything that I kind of fell in love with um, along the way is, is in there. And you've traveled, and I've seen, seen your posts. I follow you, follow you on Instagram. You've more or less played shows all over the country. Do you have any favorite areas of the country or maybe favorite venues that really tend to appreciate and support local music? Oh, yeah. Well, I always say... Blacksburg, or I'm sorry, um, it was Kingston, Arizona is where I was. Great memories from the trip. The last tour that I did was from Los Angeles back to Boston. And we stopped there and played a show. um, And the people were just so nice, so receptive. I mean, they still comment and keep up on all my social media. um, And I ended up going on a podcast the next day called Cartoon Casual. And uh, they, the one of the guys, there's two hosts, but one of the hosts took me up in his plane that day. So that was like an amazing, just spontaneous adventure that happened from playing in Kingston, Arizona. Very cool. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's hear some more music. What do you want to share with us next? Awesome. Okay. So this one is a couple years old. This one's called How Wrong Would It Be? Um, and I wrote this one while I was in Nashville. All right. We have Kat Kennedy in studio tonight on 95.9 WATD. It's all yours. I've been feeling pent up lately Like a firecracker and I'm ready to burst It's like I'm wandering through the desert I got the thirst oh. How long would it be? How long would it be? 
going on Got me feeling like my tongue's in knots Not sure where to begin oh, How about we forget the things we said and did Kennedy in studio tonight, 95.9 WATD. Very nice job on that. Thank you so much. We have to take our final time out of the night. We have Peter Black in the wide world of blues coming your way at 10. But uh, Kat, do you have uh, time for one more song? Absolutely. Okay, let's do that after the break. You're listening to 95.9 WATD. Almost Famous introducing you to the world of local bands and musicians. And we are brought to you by Tiny and Sun Squass. We have more right after this. Almost famous. You cool, man? Like how? Okay. It's where the cool kids hang out. All right, all right, all right. 95.9 WATD. Welcome back to Almost Famous here on 95.9 WATD for a few more minutes at least before we turn things over to Peter Black and the wide world of blues. But for a few more minutes, we have Kat Kennedy in studio along with her band. Kat, how you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks. Excellent. And who do we have in studio behind you tonight? I was thinking they, maybe they should introduce themselves. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, right. Well, hi, everybody. My name's Luis. I'm playing bass. My name's Chris. I'm on Cajon tonight. My name's Austin, and I'm on guitar. Excellent. You guys sound fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. And who is the, uh, the voice of the uh, laughter there? Oh, that's me, Kat Kennedy. <laughs> Excellent. Kat, give us your online information again, if you would. Yes. Okay. So we're doing a Kickstarter right now, um, and you can find info about all that and all our shows and everything. Uh, Facebook.com slash Kat Kennedy Music, and that's Kat with a K, and Kat Kennedy Music.com is the website. Fantastic. And uh, how far along is the, uh, the project? So the Kickstarter or the album? Uh, let's t- let's do both. I know, the, I know the Kickstarter is kind of in full swing at the moment, but exactly. the album. Um, so the the money being raised is to uh, start production on the album. Exactly. Yeah. So we've done a lot of work with writing and mostly putting everything in place so that as soon as we reach our goal, uh, which we anticipate doing and hope to do um, by March 10th. Uh, that we can just basically start going straight into the studio to record it. So we've been working on songs, and uh, some some of the songs that we played today will be on the album, so you got to hear those. Um, And then the rest of them, well, they're all going to be produced by various producers. Uh, So I mentioned Andy Seltzer is going to do the single. So we're just kind of trying to work on getting everything nice and uh, ready to go as soon as the Kickstarter ends. Nice. Producers like that. They like easy work. Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> organization is a, is a key factor. Yeah, <laughs> it's important. So let's talk before we go into our final song of the night about some of the rewards that are uh, possible through the Kickstarter. Yeah, so it kind of starts uh, 10 at $10, and that's a uh, pre-order of the CD, so you get a digital copy. And then from there, it goes to um, a physical copy and then some stickers. Um, and then further up along the way, $300 uh, for five people. If they donate $300, they get their song DJed by me and hopefully your help because I don't yes. know what I'm doing in here <laughs> um, on the radio here. Uh, so that's a, that's a great reward. I thought that was super creative and definitely very appreciative of you guys letting us do that. Um, and then beyond that, there is lessons. Um, so if you want to take maybe a bass lesson or, um, you know, two bass lessons or a bass lesson and a guitar lesson from Austin, they have very generously agreed to lend their time uh, to donors. Um, and then beyond that, for our, some of our higher donors, we have shows. So we will actually come to your event or house and play a trio show or a full band show. Speaking of lessons and uh, skills, and this might be a better qu uh, question for the band than for you, but um, what is your maybe greatest or most favorite skill outside of music? Or unusual skill, I should say. Oh, my gosh. How long do we have to think about this? No. Um, eating. Eating. Okay, Austin's is eating. Yeah. Austin and Louise are eating. That's <laughs> their outside yeah. skill. Are Man. Right now? Well, you know what? I'm actually a painter. I paint. I didn't know that. Yeah, I haven't painted for a long time, but um, I did sell paintings in an art show. Very yeah. cool. I'm good at flipping stuff. <laughs> Buy stuff, sell stuff, trade stuff. That is his skill. Always make it work. Yeah, Craigslist. I, I, I hear that um, that uh, Cat Kennedy EPs are worth a lot of money these days. Oh, yeah. He's been... I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably a good thing. <laughs> Well, we have to uh, make room for Peter Black in the wide world of blues. Kat, give us your website one last time, and then let's hear your final song. Sure. So it's catkennedymusic.com. And what are we going to 10 o'clock with? Uh, so this is called Last Call. An appropriate song. Yes. <laughs> let's hear it. We have Kat Kennedy and the band in the studio tonight, 95.9 WATD. It's all yours. Thanks so much. Tell me if it's a bad time Yeah, I'm alright Though my voice is shaky And I just feel the distance growing And it's not just in my mind, I know You're my own, my only everything I wanted you I won't ask you if you don't want me to Give me away you are my own, my only everything I wanted you I won't ask you if you don't want me to Give me away or take it all Yeah, I'm reaching out But this is the last call Could have had it all. 
brings a smile to my heart Like pedaling beside you on this mountain built for two I knew right from the start This love is not a race we're gonna lose You are beautiful, you wrote on a post-it note Hung it on the fridge for me while I was still asleep Save a smile for me, you wrote, you wrote it on a post-it note And I woke up to your words in the morning I've always had so much love to give You challenge me to trust myself and all these things I feel I'm changing and I feel so alive Skating on this hidden pond with you right by my side You are all I need You wrote on a post-it note Hung it on the fridge for me well Can I share it with you? Fill this wooden box with all our dreams. I can't live without you. Will you be my family? Because I. That is Katie Dobbins. It's called Post-It Notes on 95.9 WATD. This is Almost Famous. My name is John Shea. And there is a video about to be released for that song, Post-It Notes, towards the end of the month. And we have Katie on the phone right now to tell us all about that, as well as some other amazing projects that she is up to. And Katie, I have to say, you are probably the busiest person right now in the Boston music scene. I don't know about that, but I do feel busy. (laughs) (laughs) You have a ton going on. First and foremost, I want to say thank you because uh, you just recently had a celebration concert for a movement you started called Let the Music Set You Free. It was a house concert, which was simply amazing. The, The musicians and the people that came out to support you was just incredible. Oh, thank you so much. That was definitely my favorite show I've done, like, ever, probably. (laughs) It was so much fun. And the album, She Is Free. Remind us how that album came to be. Yeah, so basically, um, after years of, you know, not playing music and just kind of being shy about it and, I guess, distracted with other things, I realized that something was missing and I had a kind of uh, literal and also figurative come-to-Jesus moment. And um, I just, I knew that I had to get back into it. And it was at a conference called She Is Free where I had that moment. So I came back from that and I told my friends and family that I was going to record an album with all the songs they had written, plus some new stuff. And everybody was like, what? Okay, great. (laughs) Um, So it was really exciting and definitely a shift in the way that I had been and the things I had been focusing on before that. So the album, I, it means a lot to me and yeah, you can find it on iTunes and Spotify and all that. Excellent. And we should mention too, that you're also a full-time teacher. You do music basically every other moment that you're awake. And uh, you also found time to start that movement, the uh, Let the Music Set You Free, which you recently spun into a podcast. Tell us about that. Yeah, so um, the movement started as a tour, and once a month, you know, I was getting together with two different musicians for every show, and we were singing songs and telling stories about, you know, personal freedom and what that means for us and how we try to be free in our lives from the things that have held us back in the past. 
And the show, the tour of shows has officially ended, although I do have a couple kind of pop-up shows coming up. But I wanted to keep the movement going. So now I've shifted to a monthly podcast, and so far two episodes are out. The second one was released today. And, yeah, the movement's just kind of diving deeper into those themes of personal freedom and empowerment and self-love. The first episode was all about just my story and how She is Free came to be and why I'm doing this movement. And then the second episode that came out today is all about being free from comparing yourself to others, um, feeling like you're in competition with the people around you, and feeling like you need to criticize yourself or criticize other people. So it was a really fun. I recorded it with um, Louis Apollon, who's also a Boston singer-songwriter. That's incredible. Now, I, w- I want to go back to the album for just a moment because we, we just played Post-It Notes, and there's a not only a cool story behind the song, but there's a cool music video that's about to be released as well. Yeah, I'm so excited. It's um, my first ever music video, actually, and I've been recording it since the summer, <laughs> so it's been a long time coming. And yeah, the, the video is being released on February 24th, so less than two weeks away in New Hampshire. Fantastic. And all the information's up on your website? Yes, so you can find all that information on www.katydobbinsmusic.com. Um, or also you can follow me on Facebook, and I'm always posting stuff there, too. And I know you're short on time, but could you share with us quickly what that song is about? Because I love the uh, the meaning behind Post-it Notes, especially course, with Valentine's yeah. Day tomorrow. I love that song so much. Um, it was one of the first songs that I wrote when I was kind of starting to come back to music, and I wrote it for my uncle, who found the love of his life um, later in life. And the first time that I went to meet her and I visited them at their condo, when I walked in, the entire condo was just covered in Post-it notes, like the walls, the cupboards, the fridge, everywhere. And all of them, like every single note was just a love note to each other and really sweet, like, I'm going to the store, I'll be back in 20 minutes, I'll miss you so much. And I just, like, I couldn't get that image out of my head and I mean, the love that they have for each other is just so incredible and so powerful. So I wrote post-it notes for their wedding. Um, I surprised them and sang it uh, the night before their wedding, and it was just a really special moment. And then I um, I asked them to be in the music video for me, so they agreed. <laughs> so what you'll see in the video is um, kind of their story unfolding and just really genuine, genuine love and genuine connection. Fantastic. Give us the show date again, Katie, if you would. Yeah, it's February 24th. Um, that's a Saturday night, and it's up in New Hampshire in Laconia at a place called the Belknap Mill. That sounds like fun. Is there anybody special joining you that night as a guest? There is. Olivia Francis is opening for me, and I just love her. She's a singer-songwriter from the Boston area as well, and she's just so positive and uplifting, so I'm really excited to have her. Excellent. And uh, before we go, give your website and your podcast one last plug. Yeah, thank you so much. Um So my website is www.katydobbinsmusic.com. And uh, the podcast is called Let the Music Set You Free. You can find it on the iTunes podcast app, um, or you can find it on Podbean. So that's Let the Music Set You Free. .podbeans.com. And the guest on the show is who? Uh, the guest on the podcast is Louis Apollon. Excellent. And I've got a track that you actually sent me that I'm going to play right now, another song appropriate for Valentine's Day called More Love. Katie, thank you so much, and uh, best of luck with the CD release show, best of luck with continuing the podcast, and uh, hopefully we'll catch you in New Hampshire towards the end of the month. Thank you so much, John. Good to talk to you. Have thank you. All right. Bye. This is Louis Apollon. It's called More Love. By the way, if you like what you hear, you can see him live March 14th over at Club Pass Scene in Cambridge. 95.9 WATD, this is Almost Famous. Charlie drags warm boots Down the steps of St. Pete's The ring goes on his face Mona song of tragedy Stomach is hollow Lips of dry stone Heart cries for inclusion Each passerby shines their eyes From his lonesome
don't talk to me right now. I gotta immortalize my food. I might say call it day while I company is done. We could use, we could use a little more. A little more love And oh, I know That we've got some Good today And oh, I know I'm guilty of these Words I say Whoa, whoa We've got to find a way To rip these Let go of selfish ways This whole world is a mirror And just as special If we keep thinking about me, me and me It will surely shatter Next time you see Charlie A little more, a little more. 